This week, we're returning to Windsor to catch up with a pair of picky newlyweds. It's a real letdown. I'm quite bummed. And we're back to see a couple who are battling to get onto London's property ladder. Well, I think we have to take it because... No, it's definitely worth the risk. Both couples had a tricky search that would require some good, solid teamwork. Soften them up, a few body blows. Is that how you see me? <laughs> Is that how you no, see me, the sort of attack dogs? A bit of charm. You look great in a hat, by the way. Thanks. And a lot of blind faith. Never fear, Kirsty's here. Never fear, Kirsty's here. This is going to be good. Once upon a time, about two years ago, two sets of fresh-faced first-time buyers asked us to guide them through the big bad world that makes up the property market. Paul Lawrence and his stateside bride, Alyssa, were looking for American home comforts in an English home county. While in London, Amy Beeson and Taki Udin wanted to take the plunge with a 100% mortgage. Both couples started their journeys with high hopes. And now I come back to see whether or not they lived happily ever after. We had a huge challenge ahead. Two couples desperate for their dream starter home in two highly desirable locations. Alyssa and Paul had fallen for the tranquil towns and villages that sit in the east of Berkshire near Windsor, just 20 miles from London. For Tacky and Amy, we concentrated on West London, one of the priciest parts of a city that was at the top of its game. So we had two sets of first-time buyers looking in two of the toughest areas in the country. No wonder they had to draft us in. In Windsor, IT manager Paul Lawrence was looking to carry American bride Alyssa over the threshold of their first home. After a whirlwind transatlantic romance, she moved to the UK to be with Paul. But their three-month house hunt was proving to be something of a culture shock. I'm looking for a bigger house than England probably has to offer. You know, for 300 grand in the States, I would get, you know, a massive four-bed house. I'd probably have three bathrooms, you know, a huge, probably an acre of land. It was a case of super-sized expectations. Across the pond, you get twice the square footage for your money, but £300,000 is unlikely to buy them an American-style ranch round here. I think that if he had married a nice English girl, he would have had a house by now. <laughs> if she's happy, I am generally happy, so, you know, that's how I look at it. I could see that if we didn't get this one right, Alyssa might hightail it back to the US. So this is home, albeit a rented home, but not for much longer with any luck. I hear you've been out looking, but... Basically now we've uh, rented, I think, for long enough. I'm onto our own space, really. OK. But I have to say I'm slightly worried that you've looked at 20, 25 properties and haven't seen anything. What's, what's been going wrong? It's such a big decision, and it is our first house together, that we're just, we're just waiting for the perfect house. It's quite clear if she likes it or hates it, basically. There, there will be compromises and there will be difficult decisions. That, that's house hunting in this neck of the woods. Well, let's talk about the sort of specifics of the house that, that you want. You know, we prefer a three bed, of course, and... Uh... We want the space of the house and the sort of outside space as well. We're a bit claustrophobic in here, sort of like. OK. What do you need out of a neighbourhood? I, I want a nice neighbourhood. I want a neighbourhood where people tend to take care of their properties. A better way to say it is that's the one thing I can't compromise on. We are slightly looking for an American house in England. Within striking distance of Windsor, for <laughs> under 300 grand, yeah. house, three bedrooms. Am I delusional? I'm feeling great. Oh, uh, I'm uh, wrong place. I'd run out of that door and keep going if I were you, Phil. These guys are after a lot for their 300k budget. They want a three-bedroom house with enough American-style space to start a family. It's got to be in a decent neighbourhood. Within commuting distance of Windsor. A tall order in this neck of the woods. In London, we had no less of a challenge. Communications manager Amy and retail supervisor Taki were taking a huge risk in a bid to buy their first property. Good news was they'd paid off their student loans. Bad news was they'd got no money left to put down as a deposit. So they opted for a 100% mortgage, which gave them a budget of 250 grand. But it was five times their combined salary and over half of their monthly income, a gamble by anyone's standards. For us, it's a very big stretch. It's a huge percentage of our income. I mean, we won't have that much left, left over. 
For 18 months, they'd been renting a very nice one-bed flat in West Kensington. In my experience, when people move to their first home from somewhere like this, it can be a bit of a letdown. I predicted trouble. I'm on my way to meet Amy and Tacky, and I think their search is going to be far harder than I or they anticipate. In the area they're looking at, 250 grand does not go a long way, so I hope they're not going to be too fussy. How much do you think this flat tells me about what you're looking for? I think it tells a lot, yeah. actually. They're looking for ideally something that's got a similar kind of feel, so something that's quite airy, nice and light coming in, mm -hmm. nothing too boxy. Like something similar to this, really, where it's an open plan, kind of lounge kitchen mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, this flat would be about £300,000. With a budget of 250 grand, Amy and Tacky want a spacious one bed flat with a separate sitting room. They say they're up for a bit of DIY. And they want to be in a safe and respectable West London location. Time to swap notes, I think. So what are they like? Either staggeringly sensible or fantastically fussy. <laughs> OK, well, that's narrowed it down a lot. I just don't know which. <laughs> so both our first-time buyers had high hopes, but not quite the budgets to match. Amy and Tacky had £250,000 for their search in London and Alyssa and Paul had £300,000 to find their first home in Windsor. When it came to our search, I wanted to test whether Alyssa would be true to her word. She said that a smart location was the only thing that couldn't be compromised on, and one of the smartest in the area was Sunningdale, about 20 minutes south of Windsor. So what's the weather like in New Jersey at the moment? I think it's about um, 80 degrees, so what's that, about 28, maybe 25, yeah. 26? Very nice, too. Yeah. Quite a nice big house there. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is what we're coming to see here. Oh, OK. Uh -huh. It looks... It looks quite small, and I'm, it's it's re it's right on the road. I'm not I'm not a huge fan, but I wouldn't I wouldn't you know walk away without going inside with this one. <laughs> not a great reaction. This place has got two reception rooms, two bedrooms, and a modern kitchen overlooking the garden. It's not the all American dream, but this is the United Kingdom, and at just under three hundred thousand, it's a rare enough find in this postcode. This is in an absolutely prime location, but because it's a prime location, we've had to compromise on space. It's tiny. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's only got two bedrooms. It's not so much that it's a two bed, it's just that it's really small. I mean, this, this room is tiny. And I, I mean, I want to see more of the house, but this room right now, if this is an indication of what the rest of the house is like, it's entirely too small. Looks like the test is working. Those American-sized expectations are starting to show themselves. Now, this is the master room. OK. Unless you look fairly miserable. No, no, I'm not. It's, the room is fine. Uh, no, the house. Oh, um, it's not, it's not for, for us, I don't think. So the, the strength of the location doesn't mean you're compromised on the space, which is kind of one of the first things that you said to me that you might. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like this is really small. It is small. I think this is... It I mean... is small. So are we ruling it out? Yes, definitely, I think so, yeah. So it's not all just about the location, is it? I think I'd better try a new tack. We're back to visit two couples who were searching for their first homes. Paul had brought his American bride, Alyssa, to Windsor and they were hoping to go large with an American-sized house. But the first one we showed them was a bitter pill to swallow. This is an indication of what the rest of the house is like. It's entirely too small. In London, Tacky and Amy were desperate to get a toehold on the property ladder. But finding a home for 250000 in West London was one hell of a challenge. So we ventured further west than they would have liked to give them their first viewing in Acton. You've been in the area about five minutes while we were on our way here? Yeah, we don't really know, but I think we're quite excited. Yeah. It looks quite nice from what we've seen. It's got some nice shops and there's a school and there's a church and yeah, it looks okay. Yeah. OK, fantastic. Good start. Let's get in. I'm liking their reaction. This place is bright and spacious, but more importantly, it's a chunky 20 grand under budget at 230,000. Straight in, sitting room, kitchen. First impressions? No, I like no, it. I like yeah. that we've got a separate kitchen now, which is really nice, which mm. we haven't had. But where would you have your desk? Do you think? Compared to a lot of other things at the price range, this flat is just... It's about 
four foot bigger everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is the bedroom. It's got a nice feel to it. I mean, for us, our bedroom now, in, where we rent, is unusually large. Yeah. So everything's going to feel a bit smaller. You can't think about your flat. Okay. okay. You can't compare things to your flat. You can't in any way compare how you live there mm -hmm. to how you're going to live somewhere else. It may seem harsh, but if they compare what they can afford to buy with what they can afford to rent, we're never going to get anywhere. It's nice, isn't it? It's good. It's tiled all the way around. Yeah. Amy and Taki are the most dangerous type of house hunter. They say all the right things and they are really enthusiastic. But every now and again, flashes come out of really, really dangerous fussiness. There's no window, but you don't really notice that because they kept it quite light and white. I'm thinking they're not really sold on this place, which is a bit disappointing. It's a great price and someone is going to snap it up probably in the next 24 hours. In winter, we've got our fingers crossed that Alyssa and Paul will be a tiny bit more enthusiastic about our next property. It's in Binfield, a modern housing development 10 miles west of Windsor, extremely popular with young professionals and families. How, how about this as a, as a location, as a community? I'm happy. Yeah, looks I, nice. I, I quite like it. Yeah, this is my kind of neighbourhood. Definitely, this is what I'm talking about. A bit more of a newer look to it, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> newer houses, which we all know I love. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's 13 years old, so you're still getting a modern house, but you're not actually paying what effectively would be a premium for a brand new one. Mm hmm No, I love it. So far, so good. Definitely. Okay. Excellent. I'm liking their reaction. They wanted more space, and this house delivers. The owners cleverly converted the space above the garage, so it comes with three double bedrooms. You get more for your money around here. This one comes in an impressive 25,000 under budget. Now, it's not actually that much bigger than where we've just come from, but the layout's that much more suited to what you're trying to achieve. Definitely, 100 times better. Yeah, and you can definitely see that straight away. Like, it's obvious where things go a bit more. You can sort of see the room a bit better, so. I like it. Well, why don't you girls go upstairs? Paul and I'll look out the back. Excellent. Great. So far, so good. But could it replace the American mansion Alyssa was hoping for? So, I've been to your home country. <laughs> OK. The US of A. Yeah. And they have big houses. Huge. Why aren't you uh, taking Paul back to America? <laughs> um, because we're quite happy, we're quite settled here. It's, it's just a different lifestyle and I just have to adjust to it. You know, we're happy here and I'm happy to try and fit in. Now, the kitchen, I think you probably would want to modernise a bit, Paul. It's, yeah, this is it. where the house kind of looks as though it's 13 years old. Definitely. I think, like, at least would probably have a definite issue with, like, the current kitchen and also, like, the counter space looks uh, quite limited. Mm -hmm. So, this would be probably one of the uh, things she'd have concerns with as well. I mean, so, you're, you're, you're slightly easier going than she is? I'd say so, probably, yeah. Well, definitely, if she likes it, I know I'll like it. Alright, fine. Well, you better go and see what your wife thinks. OK, cheers. Well, at least we know where to concentrate our efforts now. Huh. Well, so this cool. is the room above the garage. Yeah, that's very nice oh. again, because there's lots of space again upstairs. It's really good. I definitely like the upstairs of this property. I, I definitely do. I mean, it's. I don't think we could get much better in the upstairs. No, not for the three bed, two really big bedrooms, basically, so... Yeah. This is going well. Pleased. Well, I'm just a spectator, not my search. No, you've, you've done well. You've softened them up for your body blows. Is that how you see me? No, is that how no, you see me? Not. The sort of attack it's not, dog, it's not. which is going to make sorry. your life easier. I'm sorry, oh. I didn't mean that. Maybe the kitchen. And... Oh, the kitchen's really small. Wow. I could work with the lounge, but um, the kitchen. Wow. It It'd definitely. I'm definitely disappointed. It's it's really small. No separate dining space either. You coming, guys? We're here. <laughs> Phil was just abusing me, I needed I an wasn't. ally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, essentially the rooms upstairs are nice. Perfect. Downstairs is a bit more of the slight issue. I don't like the kitchen at all. No. I have a big issue with the kitchen. What's it to be? Marks out of ten. I'd say six. Is oh, it? not good. Not good at all. That'll take Phil down a couple of pegs. Back in London, I think I'm on to a winner with our next property. It's in Parsons Green, a really smart area next to Fulham, and I didn't think for one minute we'd find something for them in this neck of the woods. How do you feel about the area? 
No, it's nice. It's definitely sort of a mix of what we're after, like the village kind of feel, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a lovely area. It's got good green spaces. It's got great shops, great restaurants and bars, transport links. You can't really criticise it. The flat's not in one of the area's prettiest buildings, but nonetheless, I hope they realise just how lucky they are. That building across the way, one beds are going to go for 375,000. OK. So it's something to bear in mind. What this flat lacks in character, it makes up for in investment potential. With a bit of work, this one bed could be fantastic. With a balcony and a parking space, a rare treat in London, it's 10 grand over budget at nearly £260,000, but I've heard the vendor is keen to sell. How is this for space? Oh, it's really nice big space. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you could, I mean, it needs work, but you could live in it while you're doing it. Totally, work. and look at this. We could do that now, we could knock that down. Yeah. I think it would be the right way to go, yeah. Look at you, you both look really <laughs> lit up. <laughs> No, no, it's, it's, good, it's, it's nice. a good space. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it doesn't. It's a nice block. It's not like it's some big, scary high rise. No, no, it's no. Fine. They love it, but before they get too attached, I need to be upfront about the finances. The price is a bit over your budget because okay. it's on at two five nine nine fifty. Okay. But it has been under offer three times, and those offers have fallen through. Nothing to do with the flat, mm -hmm. so there is absolutely nothing to be lost through making an offer, you know, at 249950. Okay. How are you going to afford to do the work? Yeah. That's yeah, the difficult bit. That, yeah. That's something that you need to consider. But I think that it is worth it. It really is. They could move in and do the work as and when they could afford it. It's nice big room. Obviously, we'd have to take Turn that, that out, out. yeah. And then it would open it up quite a bit more. Uh, this needs a lot of work, really. <laughs> I think this will be the first room we work on, yeah, definitely. definitely. With the prospect of a 100% mortgage hanging around their necks, it's fantastic that they can build equity into this place. So, what do you think? A maybe? A yes? I think it's a uh, yeah. Definitely, I yeah, think we yeah. really like it. Yeah. We really like it. Excellent. But so will every other bar that comes to see it, so there's no time to be wasted. Well, at least you've got irons in the fire, which is more than I've got. We've come to see a property on a brand spanking new development. It may be a building site now, but eventually there'll be 1,300 new houses here. This three-bed, semi-detached house has a big lounge, but unfortunately only a kitchen diner. It's got that nice, simple look that they like so much, and it's priced competitively at 12,000 under their 300,000 budget. <clears throat> in we come. Uh, now, there's a downstairs loo in there. Right. This is the living room. So it's, it is a, it's a blank canvas. It's going to be very neutral. Um, you can decorate it as you see fit. Put your own carpets or wooden floor or whatever you like. And the, the kitchen, kind of, you still need a bit of imagination, but you, you, get, you get it the sense of how yeah. things are going to look. It's, it's quite small, and I can see that it's, it's that same issue of that would be our dining room right there, wouldn't it? I'm trying to yeah. picture you sort of dining space separate, you know? I'm not. I'm not. not no. no. I'm not. Just, really. just a dining area, really, I suppose. Um, it, yeah, it's the fact that you don't get a proper dining area at all. Um, you just get a little table. I'm not pleased with this area at all. Because the kitchen feels like wider than like, I mean, the last me place. Me personally, I'd rather not have the downstairs loo and have a bigger dining but area. But you wanted there. a downstairs <laughs> loo. But I also wanted a <laughs> dining area. You know what I think, Paul? If we'd brought her in here and there'd be a nice dining area and no downstairs loo, she'd be. But I wanted a downstairs <laughs> loo. Right, mate. Where's the toilet? Yeah. Oh, it's a real letdown. I'm quite bummed. Wow. In the immortal words of Kirsty, that is old-fashioned picky. It's not just fussy, it's plain picky. There's nothing wrong with that kitchen whatsoever. This is a perfectly good and decent house that's in budget on a modern estate. It's exactly what they wanted. I'm not happy. You look a little bit depressed as I say. I'm so disappointed. You're still looking a bit miserable. I'm feeling a bit miserable. Come on. <laughs> It's a good house. It's a tiny house. It makes me angry, this house. It, it makes me feel angry. It takes <laughs> I, so I want to knock down walls. I want to move. I want to take out the ensuite. I want to do so many things to it. And it, it, I, just, I just don't understand it. <laughs> I guess I don't understand this country because I don't understand this house at all. 
I can deal with them hating a kitchen, even having a problem with the house. But it's the first time anyone's rejected the whole country. Paul and Alyssa have seen three properties so far, and she's hated them all. Time for reinforcements. This time we've found the perfect property for them. It's in Warfield, a choice development to the north of Bracknell. Great house. It's nice, isn't it? Yep. Well, there's a lot riding on it, so they need to like it, because there's absolutely zip else that they've liked. But never fear, Kirsty's here. Never fear, Kirsty is here. This is going to be good. And if it's not good... Don't worry. You can always commit hurry carry. Afternoon. 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 I gather things haven't gone so well since I was last with you. We haven't been doing great so yeah, far. Been definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that was a polite way of saying that Phil's not been doing great. Yeah, but thank you. Phil. There's an extra help, no. But this is a gem. It is brand new on the market, and we are the first people to see it. OK, yeah. nice. Come okay. On. let's see it. Arranged over three floors, this tasty townhouse is the biggest property so far. It's got great living space, a high-spec kitchen and three stunning bedrooms. To get them more room, we've had to ram-raid their £300,000 budget. This one comes in just shy of 310. Now, the first bit of exciting news in this house is that we've got a oh, dining room! Wow. Separate dining room. <laughs> That's what we're talking about, yeah. Wow. Um, and that it's furnished, so it's that much easier for you guys to, to yeah. visualise yourselves here. Definitely. Nice. It's just a nice room. I like it. OK, shall we see tomorrow? Brilliant. <laughs> OK. Just positive Great. smiles. Yeah, big positive smiles. Good news. And then we come into the kitchen. Oh, nice. Nice kitchen. Very light. The Very words special. that I was hoping <laughs> for so much. I like much. it. Yeah. It's a nice big kitchen. Nice space. Lots and of counter space. The house is six years old. It's had two owners. So it is still modern and contemporary. It still feels new, which you like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The crunch point for this house is whether or not you like the townhouse layout, I think it works really well. But it's not something you would probably be that familiar with, you know, being from... America, where they don't have things like that. <laughs> don't be patched. <laughs> we do I was joking. <laughs> now, up on the first floor, you've got the third bedroom and what is the lovely lounge. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is big. Yeah. It's oh, the kind of space right. we've been looking for, yeah. isn't it? Holy moly. It is good, isn't it? This is a very nice room. Very nice one. By all means. And it looks over the pole. What's going through your mind, Paul? Your wife looks happy. Yeah, I'm That's really one of the important happy. things around here. <laughs> Definitely. I, I think it looks really good so far, and this is clearly, like, happy, which uh, helps. So, up on the top floor, you've got child's bedroom, bathroom, <laughs> master room, ensuite bathroom. OK. So, you've got a shower in there. Have a look in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a great size room, though. This is really big. In my opinion, that the house works on lots of different levels because it's, it's flexible. It's something that you can grow into. Yeah, so far, so good. If Alyssa's happy, then we're happy. But at £310,000, the asking price could still be a sticking point. There's a big smile. Yeah. That's what we I'm wanted. Happy. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy. I do. I really like it. Couldn't ask for much more. Well. You could. It could be a bit cheaper. That's the only thing, yes. That's, that is our one concern. Yeah. We, we will have to talk about the price because we, we definitely couldn't afford to pay a cent over what they're asking for. So um, that's definitely a concern. But um, mm. as far as what the house is, we're happy with the house. Yeah. Well, seeing as you've been unhappy with everything else, th therefore <laughs> there is a clear winner should we be able to secure it for you. Okay. Will do. Right. Lucky I enjoy a good haggle. This week, we're looking for the proverbial needle in a haystack, but twice. We're back visiting two sets of first-time buyers. Windsor couple Alyssa and Paul were looking for their first marital home. They rejected everything we showed them. It makes me angry, this house. It, it makes me feel angry. <laughs> Until they fell for this budget-busting place in Warfield. At 10 grand over their £300,000 pot, there were tough negotiations ahead. And we had our work cut out with our other set of first-time buyers. Tacky and Amy were risking it all in West London with a 100% mortgage, just as the property market was hitting its peak. They liked this place in Parsons Green, but we had one more trick up our sleeves. Our next flat was in Hammersmith, or at least it would be once it was built. Now, this requires more vision than anything else yeah. we've seen so far. 
and it's not for everyone that I'd wear this get up. <laughs> Part of this development is aimed at first time buyers, key workers, and low earners. Successful applicants will buy a percentage of their flat and then pay rent on the rest of it. At £345,000, if these guys tried to buy this flat outright, they'd be nearly a hundred grand over budget. It's the biggest property we've shown them so far and a great long-term option. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this one... It's got two bedrooms! Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> But it's quite a big old place. Definitely. Oh, I really <laughs> love it. It's great. It's really great. What you're doing, effectively, is you would be borrowing about £172,000 and paying back the mortgage on that, mm. and then paying rent on the additional yeah. money. Yeah. Their monthly outgoings would be almost exactly the same as a two hundred and fifty grand mortgage. So there's still some pretty big expenditure going on, but the benefits are more than obvious. You've got a fantastic big space here, the open plan kitchen that you wanted and something that, I mean, go to the window. Oh, oh my gosh, look how far you can see. Yeah. Oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh you can see the river. Oh look, we've got dual aspect. That's so cool. Oh, that's fantastic. That is a proper river view. That's, that's not a glimpse. Blimey, it's a while since I've seen this level of excitement. This would be our room. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a little closet. I think it's job done, isn't it? Yeah, but you can't add value. Well, they'll, they'll be here for the long term. Wow, look at the views. It's incredible. Yeah. And my mum would come and stay with us because she'd have somewhere to sleep. Yeah. I think even if it's a bit of a gamble, because we don't know whether we'll definitely get it from, from the council, I think we have to take it because... No, it's definitely worth the risk. We'd need to jump in there and just hope for the best. Yeah, I'm sure Finn and Kirsty will say the same. Yeah. They can't do any work, so they just do have to Do they want to do work? I'm sure you've convinced they them. They say they want to do work, but I think they're very inexperienced. There is a little tiny bit of ditziness which comes out and you just think, Ooh! Ooh! Okay. Yeah. You look great in a hat, by the way. Thanks. Do you think it suits me? Yes. We love it. <laughs> it's really good. No, we really love it. Yeah. 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 Um, you can't fault it, really, <laughs> can you? I mean, I think this is definitely where yeah. we want to be. I think Parsons Bean is what we would go for, is like, if we, if we didn't get this. Yeah, this one, yeah. There's a sort of word of warning. This undoubtedly will be a popular scheme. Yeah. You might not get this. In waiting for this, you might lose Parsons Green. Yeah. It's, no, that's tough. No, no, no. <laughs> We're going to stay on top of it, Phil. I can stay on top of this situation. No one's losing anything. Yeah, you can register interest, but unless you're there actually negotiating with a deal on the table, they can always sell it to somebody else. My weapon. <laughs> oh, that's your weapon. It's your very noisy mouth. <laughs> it only seems noisy to you, Phil, because you don't listen. <laughs> don't worry, Kirsty, you're impossible to ignore. Just as Alyssa and Paul have found it impossible to ignore this house in Bracknell, despite its potential to stretch their budget beyond breaking. Now, whilst as first-time buyers, I think it's always nice to be able to add value to, to, to a home, and I don't think you can here. Mm. Um, you can at least move straight in without spending any further money. Decoration, I think, is good. Yeah, it's definitely livable right now. We know we could just move in, enjoy it, live here right now. Having three levels really works, and to be honest, it's the only way we were ever going to get them the space they needed in a modern development. Up right up to the top. You've got a big house to climb now. <laughs> You've still got yeah. four years left on the NHBC guarantee. Does that just mean, like, major sort of... Major Excellent. structural defects are covered. Okay. Right. Paul? Um, good, excited. It's, I like it more second time round, really. It's good, like, the kitchen space downstairs. I'm just, you know, I'm really scared. I don't want to fall in love and lose it, so I'm just um, keeping my emotions intact until then. H have a look round, take your time, try and picture yourselves and all your stuff in here. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, can we afford the house? Yeah, we can, like, nitpick at things, but to be honest, it just comes down to the price and also the fact we can't get into a bidding war because... This is top, top budget, so... Yeah, definitely. In fact, it's 10,000 over their top budget, so there's not much room to manoeuvre. There's absolutely no doubt it's a great house. The thing is, everybody else that comes around is also going to think the same. I've no idea yet whether they're going to be able to secure it. It's being marketed at nearly 10 grand over their maximum £300,000 budget.
and Paul and Alyssa are worried about overstretching themselves. I think, I mean, my gut is to start as low as we possibly can. My advice is that we open proceedings with an offer at 295. Okay. Okay, so we start at 295 then. If, if you're happy with that. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, let's go. Uh, Paul, it's Phil Spencer. Hi. Um, we've just had a, a very interesting conversation, um, and I'm pleased to say that they do like the property. They like the property very much indeed. Um, but I'm afraid the price doesn't stack up by, by some distance. The offer that they've asked me to put in is for 295000 I believe it's a fair and, and good offer, and it comes from two very genuine buyers. Many thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks, Paul. Speak to you later. Bye. It's a waiting game, I'm afraid. He's going to ring the vendors straight away. OK. And they're not left waiting long. Hello? Hi, Paul. Hi. Mm-hmm. Firmly rejected. Thanks, Paul. Bye. The vendors have been out looking at properties themselves and haven't found anything that is remotely in interesting. They're saying that they feel very negative about the market, but yet they're demanding full asking price. Where does that leave us? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do we do from here? Exactly. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> I think we should just leave it on the table as is. It's a good offer. But before we were even given the option of negotiating further, we were informed the vendor had withdrawn their property from the market. The only thing to do was go straight back to the drawing board. So we showed them a three bed in Binfield, 11 miles from Windsor. It didn't make the shortlist as we thought it would be too small. But it seems you can't spend a week with us without learning to compromise. We couldn't get the perfect house. There had to be sacrifices along the way. They loved the house, submitted an offer, and two weeks later, it was theirs. <laughs> I started to realise, OK, this is what we're going to get for our money, and I think that this is the best that we could have gotten for our money. And it's a great investment. For just under £287,000, Alyssa and Paul have bought themselves a garden, that oh-so-important dining space, and three bedrooms. Perfect for new arrivals, maybe. He calls the third bedroom the nursery already, so... <laughs> you don't want to call it, but no, yeah. <laughs> so I think this is definitely a family home. This is definitely where we'll start a family. Fast movers. Alyssa and Paul have been in their new home for a year and a half now. I wonder how our super fussy couple are getting on. When we first moved in here, I mean, I just remember us both, we got the keys, we came in and we just sat on the floor and sulked for a good hour, because we just thought, this place is tiny, it's grubby, the carpets are dirtier than we realised, and the walls and everything is just wrong, and um, it felt so small. But now that we've put the flooring in, and now that we've painted the walls, and now that we've, you know, opened up the curtains, it's, it's, it feels like a completely different room. Probably a bit more work than we thought at the time, but, you know, now we've done it, it's sort of like... It's all been worth it, definitely. Yeah. With the house coming in way under budget, Paul and Alyssa had an extra 13 grand to turn it into their home. They've splashed out on new furniture, new flooring and a modern kitchen and bathroom, all within the first six months of moving in. Finally having uh, our own home as a married couple is just amazing. To me, I've like, we've rented, we've never had a home together. And I know it costs more, but it's nice to be able to like, decorate as we have, you know, and we've, we're very like, picky, we like our own things. It's nice that we've actually had this house and we've been able to do our own stuff to it. We made the kitchen exactly as we want it and the bathroom exactly as we want it. And it's, we've never had that before. And I think, you know, it's amazing to be able to do that. And I love it for that fact. And just as Paul hoped, the third bedroom is about to become a nursery. We're now expecting a little one in early July, so that's exciting. We've got a little summer baby on the way, and um, so that leads to more improvements, obviously. We've, we've got the nursery going at the moment. Um, it's so quite, quite exciting for me as a boy, so I get to teach him all the sports that I can't quite play that well, so hopefully he'll be better than me, so that'll be good. <laughs> I think possibly, maybe definitely, we'll get um, a second baby in the future. It's, um, it's quite good we've got a house that's got a space for it, really, which is quite nice. 
And believe it or not, they haven't just got babies on the brain. They love their new neighborhood too. To me, I wanted to feel like I was living in the suburbs, and I do feel like I'm living in the suburbs. I like that it's young families, it's quiet. Um, you know, we back up onto a lane, so we don't have a lot of noise. Yeah, we're tucked away really nicely, and we're not overlooked. We're out the back in the summer of trees up, it's so nice. it's really nice. Nice neighborhood, nice people around, and that's exactly what I wanted. It may not be quite the American dream, but it's not far off. And for the moment, it looks like Alyssa, Paul and family are here to stay. We've been married for a little over two years now, but now, you know, we've been in the house for a little over a year and we've got a baby on the way. So it really is all coming together now, I guess, in a sense. And it feels just a little bit more, we're a complete family unit. <laughs> so it's happily ever after for Alyssa and Paul. And in London, Amy and Tacky were chasing a similar dream. They wanted the shared ownership flat in Hammersmith, but there was a detailed application process which we helped them navigate. These schemes consider many factors before allocating properties, so we couldn't afford to pin all our hopes on this flat. With that in mind, I took them back to the great flat in Parsons Green. It was 10 grand over their 250,000 budget and needed updating so it was important that they didn't get carried away. I must say, I, I love this flat. I think it, it's streaks ahead of, mm. of some of the other options. Um, if you didn't buy this, I might. <laughs> <laughs> from an investment point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not joking, from an investment point of view, it, it's an absolute winner yeah. yes. for a long-term investment. Definitely. Um, well, let's, let's talk it through. Uh, Decoration, something that you can do yourselves. Yeah. The floors are fine, the windows are fine. We like the floors, definitely. Um, personally, I think this kitchen's great. I wouldn't be opening the wall up. I know that's something that, that Kirsty suggested. Yeah. Yeah. But in my opinion, that's a great room. Mm -hmm. This is a great kitchen. Mm. If you remove the wall, you're going to lose quite a lot, if not the majority, of your storage space. Mm. And you then shrink your options of where you can put your furniture in that room. Yeah. Okay. So, personally, I'd leave things just as they are. I know we can't agree all the time, Phil, but you're wrong. I think we get a really nice, clean, simple white suite that yeah. most people are going to like. Take off all the tiling. Yeah. Yeah. Choose something maybe black and white because not many people are going to dislike black and white. Yeah. Rather than going with like a fashion because that, mm. then that could look quite dated. Top marks for being practical. So just all this out then. Yeah. I've been massively impressed by these two right from the start. They'd done their research, they were fully prepared, fully organised, they knew what they wanted. They work very well together as a team, and that means they've been able to reach clear, confident decisions right the way through. And their best decision of the day is to ask me to put in an offer of 250 grand on this place. With the agent contacted, all we can do is bite our nails and wait. The next day I've got news on Hammersmith and Parsons Green and it's time to tell Tacky and Amy. Let's start with the bad stuff. OK. Parsons Green. An architect has been to see it who has a 50% deposit. Oh, OK. And has made an offer at the asking price. Right. At the moment they're in the process of judging whose offer is most acceptable and I think we would be kidding ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. if we thought that it was going to be our offer. So that one's as good as gone, which brings us back to Hammersmith. Success here depends on them proving that they're needy enough to have it. Now, we have discovered that in the list of priorities for housing need, you come fifth. OK. Yeah. Again, not the world's best piece of news. <laughs> the, the decisions will be made next week. And I think you just have to cross your fingers for that. Poor Amy and Tacky. Now, with all their hopes pinned on one property, all they can do is wait. Nearly two years ago, we were with first-time buyers Amy and Tacky. They were hedging their bets with two fantastic properties. But after losing out on the Parsons Green home, they had their names down and their hearts set on the shared ownership scheme in Hammersmith. But hearts are made to be broken, and two months on, there was more bad news. We wanted the shared ownership flat, but unfortunately we weren't successful, and the council... Yeah, the council returned our cheque on that one. 
But Taki and Amy weren't going to cry over spilt milk. So we tried for two, we didn't get either of them. Yeah. And then obviously the property market changed. So in hindsight, it's probably a good thing because we would have been buying at the absolute peak, peak of the market. market. Once we realised that you know we weren't going to be able to get somewhere, we just thought, well, we love living here yeah. and we've kind of fallen in love with living in Kensington all over again. We decided that the money that we would have used as a deposit isn't enough at the moment um, because you have to have such a large deposit. Yeah, definitely. So we decided that we'll probably put it towards something else, haven't we, Tax? Something shiny, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's got a nice ring to it. It's two years since they put their search on hold and started shopping for an engagement ring. I'm back in West Kensington to find out how Amy and Tacky are getting on, but I'm meeting them here in their new flat. After all that disappointment, they have finally pulled it off. And what a great spot. Tacky and Amy are now the proud owners of a two-bedroom basement flat within walking distance of Kensington High Street. It's their dream location, but at 316 grand, the flat was more than 60,000 pounds over their original budget. How on earth did they manage it? Hello. Kensington? <laughs> How did you pull this off? My goodness, <laughs> mate. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to see you both. Do you want to come in? Love to. <laughs> How did it all happen? What's the story? I can't believe you ended up here. No, I think it's all by chance, really, and obviously with the market changing. But I think I was curious, so I just had a look on the market. And then it just started the momentum again, and two weeks later, we found this place. So, have a really quick <laughs> yeah. And that was because the market was falling? Yes. And you could get more for your money? Yeah, yes. and also we had chain of jobs as well, so we were able to get, you know, a, Slightly a bigger better mortgage. deal, basically, that was okay. out there. I mean, we had some help with finding some of the, like, the deposit. We had help from the family, which, which was really great. Uh, so, lots of things that just happened in our favour. It must have been incredibly exciting picking up the keys and <laughs> finally opening the it door. It was so again. exciting. We, we, we went to the Fulham Road, which isn't a very long walk from here, but we <laughs> bounced the whole way yeah. down because we were just so what, excited. Keys in hand. Keys in yeah. hand. And, like, Taki was kind of like, no one can take these off because of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get home and lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> lock ourselves in, then. That's it. I'm not surprised they're excited. They're living in a fantastic area which two years ago, with no deposit, they never dreamed they could afford. But by putting their search on hold, they managed to get more cash in the bank and the market came to them. With just a few finishing touches, the flat was ready to move into. And while it may be small, they've got a good-sized double bedroom and a guest room. The second bedroom, yes. presumably, was a bit of a bonus. It was, yeah. I know you wanted it, Definitely, but... yeah. I mean, it was one of the things we were looking for anyway. But as it turns out, it's kind of become a, a guest room, really, for all the various people that keep popping by and saying, oh, have you got a weekend free? We're like, yeah, 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 come along. Okay. Yeah, I think being so central and being in West Kensington, everybody wants to yeah. stay. So yeah. it is literally like we have to almost have a booking system really? for everybody who's coming. And then I can see there's something out the back. Yeah, we've got something called a garden now. <laughs> 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 Two bedrooms and a garden. Yeah. You should be home finder. That. That's exactly what you should be. Have a look. <laughs> With all this newfound space, their home has become a real social centre. <laughs> but this loved-up pair have still found time for romance. So did Taki eventually buy something shiny and bright and exciting? Yes, yes he, he did. did. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. And when's the wedding? Um, it's at St Paul's Cathedral um, mm. this summer. So. St Paul's Cathedral? Yes. How'd you pull that off? Uh, well, my mum's um, got an MBE um, a couple of years ago, so if your parents um, have an honour, then their children can get married there. So wow. I'm very excited. I should think so <laughs> too. How on earth did you manage to plan a wedding and look for a house? Taki kind of said to me, well, you're busy thinking about the church and the reception and I'm going to go and look for a house. So you let him get on with it? I did let him get on with it and I think he did a great he job. He absolutely did a great job. <laughs> Gold star for Tacky. Could he be in line for Husband of the Year? He and Amy have yeah. always had their heads screwed on, but I'm really impressed with how they've adapted to their new responsibilities. You know, taking on more commitments, growing up thinking, right, I definitely have to plan for the future now. And, yeah. You know, obviously proposing to Amy, all that's kind of I've taken on board and it's kind of, kind of, you know, grounded me, so to speak, and kind of, right, everything I do is, is for us, really, for the future. I think it's such a special moment as a couple when you buy your first bit yeah. of England, <laughs> uh, you know, and that's it, that's mine. I found it, I bought it, I own it. Definitely. It's, it's great. Yeah, I mean, as we still 
I have to pinch ourselves thinking, is this really ours? It yeah. works hard for it, and it's really, really nice. Yeah. Amy and Taki have got themselves a great property, but they bought it just before the country went into recession, and investments are only good if you buy them at the right time. The market's been falling, and, and it is still falling. You paid 316 650 Yeah. Any idea what it's worth now? I could be really wrong, but I don't think we've overpaid. I think I think it was still a, a really... Yeah. I think it was a good deal, yeah, do you? Yeah, I think we've always said that we're in it for the long term, <laughs> not for a, sure. like a quick turnover, and regardless of what it's worth now, but I think maybe, the future's yeah. what we're after, really. I can tell you that you did a sensational deal. Okay. <laughs> if that was to go on the market now, it would be 350 to 360. No way. <laughs> yeah. You're 30, 40 grand up ahead right now. In recession. In recession, in a falling market. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you romped home with that flower. That's one of the best deals I've ever seen done. Well done. Both of you. you. I think you've got tons to look forward to. Definitely. Good luck at the wedding in the summer. <laughs> Flat, a new job. Cool. Well done. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so all's well that ends well. Taki and Amy have got themselves a great investment, a great home and a great future ahead. Sometimes buying a new home can seem like an uphill struggle. Taki and Amy and Alyssa and Paul took their fair share of knocks. But they picked themselves up dusted down and didn't give up. And now, well, there's a wedding planned in London and a baby on the way in Windsor and two very happy homes. Good luck to them. <laughs>